You have to learn how to look deep in the scripture. Amen. And if you don't have that ability, amen, um, you should really listen to the pastor as he goes deeper and you'll get an appetite for it. Let's see. You understand. And, and even if God don't use you to go deeper, he will develop an appetite in you to want deeper. So when you do get around false or lightweight folk, he'll say, listen, I'm already on meat, and I'm not on milk right now. So amen. All right. You have to understand what God did with Enoch was pre-rapture was pre-Church of Philadelphia. He didn't just do that with him just for him alone. If he did, he wouldn't have had it written. They could have read about the lineage of Enoch. He was the father of Methuselah, glory to God. They could have read about, written about that without putting in there that when he died, or didn't die, he was just taken. But the reason God puts little breadcrumbs in there is for us to understand fully, glory to God, this thing that's called the plan of salvation. Salvation has a plan to it. It's not just an action. It just, it's not just when you got saved five years ago. There's a plan to your salvation. It is to be daily worked out, walked out, cross-carried, glory to God. Make mistakes, get up, repent of it, turn from it, learn from it. Glory to God, grow from it. It is a plan of salvation. Glory to God. God don't save you and vaporize you and you go to heaven right away. Heaven is a prepared place for people that will prepare. He leave you on earth to be a witness. He leave you here to grow so there be righteousness in the land. Glory to God. He wants to raise you up like Jesus as a tender plant out of dry ground. Quit complaining about your family background. Quit complaining about what you lack in. Carry your cross and let God perfect you. Glory to his holy name. all a part of his plan for you. By faith, Enoch, read Dr. Owens. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death. Read the, read the word, uh-huh. And was not found because God had translated him. Mm -hmm. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. That he pleased. Not that he just believed in. That he pleased. He lived his life. He treated others. He did what God wanted him to do so much that it. So please don't tell me, pardon the double negative, please don't tell me you can't please God. Because before Jesus, before the Holy Ghost poured out, there was a man called Enoch who didn't have the Holy Ghost like you have the Holy Ghost. Didn't have the written word like you have the written word. Glory to God. And you know what he did? He lived his life. He treated others that God was pleased with him. And God saved him from the last greatest enemy of man, death. I wish I could stir up your appetite that you could be like that category of those dogs I've heard of. They were raised. They were bred just to be nice, cuddly, master-pleasing pets. When are you going to get the most out of your suffering? Maybe he's trying. See, that's what carrying a cross will do. It'll make you so you please him. When are you going to get the, the most out of what you go through, what you have to put up with, what comes your way that you don't like? When are you going to learn? Maybe God is trying to get you to a place that he can rapture you out of here. That you will be pleasing to him. Some of y'all then, amen, uh, dropped the cross, chopped it up, and put it in the fireplace for, for, for fuel. Just burned it up. Didn't realize you were supposed to carry it. 
Didn't realize that, glory to God, that you were supposed to be mistreated. And as they mistreat you, glory to God, it, it would just take you higher. This meant that you're still serving, you're still working, you're still doing what you should do with a good, sweet attitude. Amen. Glory to God. You know, singing that little song that uh, Seven Dwarfs sang. Uh, I can't remember. What is that little song? Whistle. Yeah, yeah. Hey, man, you ought to be up in church whistling while you work. You can whistle Amazing Grace. Y'all ain't going to help me preach. No. It's your, what is it? It's your cross. It's your cross to go through. To put up with somebody. You know they don't like you, but still, you love them and put up with them. Don't wait for me to back up. I ain't apologizing for nothing. Here, come on. It's your cross. It's your cross. Cross. I'm just tired of going to church and they got to have night church. 99.9% of the churches in America don't have night church. And them folks can go home after church and go out to eat and go to the mall and uh, go to the show and go bowling. And, and amen. And, 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 and 1% of them have family time. 1%. Because we want to make it. And we know that it takes something. Lord, Lord, oh, let me move on. I don't know why. I don't know why. I got to, if, if I'm not going to be there, I got to call and tell them I'm not going to be there and tell them why. I don't know why. I don't know why. Just open up that little handbook you got from the job that said, if you're not going to be here, you got to call. You got to let them know you're not going to be here. Ah, so glory to God. Amen. And you don't think God expect more? It's called your... Please be seated. Yeah, I'm grown. I ain't going to say I got to do all that. It's called the making of you. Any devil can stand up at this altar and say, Jesus is Lord, and he's not saved. But a devil can't live this thing out. The devils believe and tremble, but they can't live it. First Thessalonians, I got to rush. First Thessalonians 4 and 1 says, Dr. Owens, please. Furthermore, uh -huh. then we beseech you, brethren, and exhort you by the Lord Jesus, that as ye have received of us, how ye ought to walk and to please God, so ye would abound more and more. More, see there, more and more. That as you learn to want to please him and make you abound, now he can bless you more, now you can do more, glory to God, because your heart, is really in the right place. We wouldn't have to keep preaching on the little elementary things that you should know already. Because you know what? You would have a heart that want to please him. And when you have a heart that want to please him, it grieves you when you don't. We shouldn't have to keep preaching on the bed of fornication so much. My God, you know that. And the only way you're going to stay out of it is that you want to please God. You can sneak and do it and hope nobody ever see it or know it. Glory to God. But amen. Oh, it's, it's going to be found out. But you can think you can get away with it. But when you want to please him, you don't even try to get away with it. And we wouldn't try to have to work so hard trying to always refresh you over things that you've been knowing for some 15 years. Hmm. 